Hey guys, welcome back to our summer devotions. Today is Friday and we are going to be focusing on the mind. Uh, first, I'm going to read our memory verse and then we're going to get into it. So, Matthew 22, 37. Here we go. And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. So, today's focus, like I said before, is on the mind. And our focus today is where can I find true happiness? This is a really important and deep question uh, that we need to start talking about. Because as we see in our culture, so many people are searching for this happiness. Uh, and they want to find it really bad. But they keep looking for things uh, that just aren't going to just aren't gonna fill that need that spiritual need that we have in us that includes our relationship with god and so many of these people are gonna try and find it in wealth uh you know cars all of these things that you know for the moment they feel like they feel that but after a while you just feel empty and so we're going to focus on where jesus specifically tells us what we need to do to feel that true happiness so i'm going to go to mark 10 17 through 23 you can turn there with me i'll give you just a second so mark 10 17 through 23 okay all right here we go as he was sitting out on a journey a man ran up to him and knelt before him and asked him good teacher what shall i do to inherit eternal life and jesus said to him why do you call me good no one is good except god alone you know the commandments do not murder commit adultery do not steal do not bear false witness do not defraud honor your father and mother and he said to him teacher i have kept all of these things from my youth up looking at him jesus felt a love for him and said to him one thing you lack go and sell all that you possess and give to the poor and you will have a treasure in heaven and come follow me but at these words he was saddened and he went away grieving for he was one who owned much property and jesus looking around said to his disciples how hard will it be for those who are wealthy to enter the kingdom of god this is a really important passage because it talks about basically how wealth doesn't uh wealth doesn't buy happiness uh we think about the rich young ruler he had anything he wanted he could get whatever he wanted yet he still had that spiritual need that we were talking about and that's when he approached jesus that's when he asked jesus specifically i need this love i need this feeling what can i do to get that and jesus is saying you need to let go of your greed let go of your material wants and put all your trust in me and that's really hard to give up and as we see with the rich young ruler he decided to not to because he was already wealthy and so he still continued the delusional belief that just because he was wealthy and just because he had those possessions uh that he could find that happiness and that love that he was looking for uh and even jesus said in the verse after it in verse 23 he was saying it's going to be difficult for those type of people to enter the kingdom of god because they're not willing to give up these things they're not willing to give up their wealth to give up their selfishness to give up their lust even and come to me uh, come and establish a relationship with me and so that's really important for us to focus on because we need to put god first in those situations when you sit down and you think i'm just not good enough or i'm just not happy and i need to go out and work i need to go out and try and make some money i need to go buy something new i need to get a new video game all of these things you need to remember those things are only temporary they'll only last for a little bit uh they're not going to give you that spiritual desire that you have uh, and so that relationship and that need can only be fulfilled with a loving relationship with god continually keeping it up every day uh, for another example uh we're going to think about solomon Think about uh, Solomon's reign, okay? In the beginning, it went really well because Solomon trusted God. Uh, he asked for wisdom from God. God gave him this wisdom, so much so that the Bible even says that he was the wisest man on earth. And when he did that, uh, Solomon could get whatever he wanted. He became incredibly wealthy. He had everything that he wanted, but he let that get to his head. And in his later years, he was not satisfied he was not happy even though he was probably the richest ruler on the earth he had a tremendous amount of stables he had a giant palace he made a temple to god even he had so many uh wives and people in his court and yet he still couldn't 
find that desire. He still couldn't feel that love and joy that he was looking for. And it led him to the point to even create idols and just turn his back to God altogether because he became so obsessed uh, with his greed and all these things that it just left him empty. And even in the end, he paid for it because God split his kingdom in two and gave judgment on Solomon. So essentially what this focuses on is that our physical happiness is not equal to our spiritual joy. Spiritual joy is completely different than the temporary happiness that the world tells you that you're supposed to feel. We want joy. Joy is greater than happiness because joy is, uh, you're always joyful through everything, through every situation, even when something bad happens. If you still have that relationship with God, you're still going to feel that joy that will help you get through certain situations. Uh, as compared to the world, you're just going to have momentary happiness and it's not going to be the same thing. So we need to focus on our relationship with God. We need to focus in feeling God's love and then giving God's love to other people. Instead of being obsessed with ourselves, being selfish, trying to find happiness in material possessions that will eventually fade away. So to wrap it all up, we're going to go to two passages of the Bible. The first one is going to be Mark 10, 29 through 31. And then the latter is going to be Mar uh, Psalm 4, 7. So I'm going to go to Mark really quick. So Mark 10, 29 through 31. Okay. All right. And here it is right here. It says, Jesus said, truly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or farms for my sake and for the gospel's sake, but that he will receive a hundred times as much now in the present age, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and farms, along with the persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first. So just let that verse sink in. Uh, what Jesus is saying here is that the first will be last and the last will be first. Many people in this life, they're going to put their, themselves ahead of you. All of these people that are rich now, uh, when it comes time for heaven and hell, they won't be rich. They're not going to have anything that's going to uh, establish that relationship with God. They're probably not going to be saved either because they haven't taken the time out to confess Jesus as Lord because they don't care. They're searching for the happiness uh, like Solomon, like this rich young ruler. Uh, they want it in wealth. They want it in uh, just business, things like that, where they think that they are greater than God uh, in their search for happiness. But in truth, uh, when the time comes, they will find out God will reign supreme and that they missed out on an amazing opportunity to have the best relationship known to man with God. Uh, simple as that. All right, we're also going to go to Psalm 4-7. So that's going to take a while, probably in your Bible. Uh, I'll wait. Okay, Psalm 4-7. You have put gladness in my heart more than when the grain and the wine abound. I'm going to read that again really quick. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their grain and their new wine abound. So as we find out, David is saying here to God, because of my relationship with you, you put that joy in my heart. You are in control of these things and you give them to me because of our relationship, because I I worship you, because I am in this father and son or father and daughter relationship with you that you care about me you are my god you are my father all of these things and you love me with that love that no one can describe so essentially what god is saying uh, in this verse also for us to take away is that if we have this relationship if we care about god if we care about all of these things he will put this happiness into our heart and that will be the true happiness that we seek uh so Thank you for listening. I hope you guys have a great day. Uh, make sure to memorize our verse, Matthew twenty two thirty seven, 37, and we will see you later, okay? All right, bye.